Hi guys, welcome back to Data Every Day. Today we'll be looking at a uh, data set of zoo animals and trying to classify what type of animal they are based on a series of attributes. And you can see um, this very nicely clean and uh, well well crafted data set um, is already in numerical form and the class types are just given as numbers. And if we go over here we can see the seven class types are mammal, bird, reptile, fish, amphibian, bug, and invertebrate. So uh, this is what we will be classifying. We have 101 training examples, and here's a list of the features that we'll use uh, to classify. All right, so let's get started. Uh, I'm just going to import these standard libraries. We'll be using Label Encoder to get the um, classification column to be uh, start indexed starting at zero. Uh, instead of at one, and we'll be using the train test split function just to speed up the process. So this will be obviously a very a much uh, shorter episode, a very simple data set, but uh, we should be able to get some pretty good results, I hope. So let's uh, go ahead and we can get the file path to the zoo.csv, which is what we're using. We'll just copy it right there, and we can load it in using the pandas read csv function. Oh, uh, let's uh, store that in data and then take a look at it. All right, here we go. Um, now, we're not really concerned about retaining this animal name. Uh, what we could do is just uh, get a map to the of the name to the index or the other way around to just retain the information, but it's okay for if we just drop it for our purposes. Data drop animal name on the first uh, column axis and in place. All right. Now, uh, let's you know let's make this uh, pre -pro pre processing. And okay, well first we'll check for uh, null values. Actually, we can get some info on the data set real quick. And as we saw before, everything is an integer, um, and it looks like there's no null values. Right, 101 examples, 101 non-null in every single column. So, just to confirm, data dot is na dot sum will give us the number of null values in each column, and it looks like we have none, uh, no null, no null values at all. So that's good. Uh, we also don't have to encode anything because everything is already in numerical form. So. Uh, we, I guess we could scale this data. Uh, best thing to use here would be a min-max scaler since we know the, the values of these are not going to take on uh, wild ranges. Uh, rather, there won't be many outliers in this data set, probably none at all. Um, but let's go ahead and make a new one. Let's say uh, splitting and scaling. So let's split the y off. The y we're not going to want to scale, right? The y, the y is our classification column, class type. So we're just going to split that off. Y equals data sub class type, and then x is just going to be data dot drop class type. Everything except class type. First axis, column axis. It's really the second axis. Starts at zero, um, and then we'll scale the rest of it and then we'll just run some models on it. So uh, run that, and then uh, we imported the scalar. No, we need to import the scalar. From sklearn.preprocessing, import minmax scalar. And let's just put it up here instead. Okay, run that. Now we'll make the scalar object to just be uh, min max scalar, and then um, we'll scale it. We'll scale x, not y, right? X equals scalar dot fit transform x, and this is actually going to return back a numpy array. So let's turn it back into a data frame, and we'll keep the columns as they were before. Okay, now we're taking a look at x, and we can see everything is scaled between 0 and 1. Uh, that's what the min-max scalar does. So, 
uh, it looks like everything except, I mean, based based on what we're seeing here. I'm not sure if uh, what data is hidden on, in the examples in between, but it looks like this had four unique values. That's why we're seeing increments of four. And everything else looks like probably just uh, binary columns. So I think we're just ready to train. I mean, this, this data set required absolutely minimal uh, processing. So we'll train three uh, models, right? Just to see, compare some results. Three classification models. The first one we'll do will be logistic regression. Uh, then we'll do a uh, support vector machine. And last, we can do neural network. And we'll just take all these from sklearn. So first, uh, from sklearn dot linear model, import logistic regression. Uh, and then here from sklearn dot svm import SVC, support vector classifier, and here from sklearn.neural network import MLP classifier, multi layer perceptron classifier. Alright, we'll just use the same code for each. Um, we'll call this uh, log model equals uh, logistic regression. I'm just doing these in parallel, so you can see uh, SVM model will be SVC, and NN model will be MLP classifier. So for this, we're okay. Uh, we won't do it with regularization. This should be fine. With this, we're going to specify a C, which will be our regularization strength, and uh, well, this would be inverse regularization strength, I think. Uh, and this one, uh, we we'll specify the hidden layer sizes. And let's just try 16, uh, two layers of 16. Okay, now same code for each, which will just be log model dot train, no, not, not train, dot fit, x train, y train. And let's just take that, put it on each. Okay. And we'll just run. Oh, right. <laughs> we should split it again. I forgot to split this with the train test spl uh, split. So x train x test, y train y test equals train test split x y train size, let's make it 70%. Okay, run that. Uh, we'll run this, that's training. Run this, that's training. Run this, that's training. Okay, it says it didn't converge. We'll still, let's just see how it goes. Uh, now, we'll say uh, results. And we can print, we'll say uh, logistic model. Why don't we do this? Print accuracy results. trying to get this looking nice. All right, 16 is the answer. Okay, in logistic model, uh, we'll have a uh, log model dot score. Yeah, let's just make these here. We'll say log accuracy is log model dot score, x test, y test. And we can just grab that. We'll say uh, SVM accuracy is SVM model dot score, XTest, Y test, and NN model 
dusk, uh, and then accuracy equals and then model.score x test y test. So here we'll put in log ack print uh, SVM model comma SVM ack and neural network model and and then ack. All right, and just so that this looks nice, put them all lined up. Okay, take a look. And we can see, all right. So it looks like um, uh, the logistic model and the SVM model are actually neck and neck, the exact same value. Neural network did not perform as well. So why don't we um, try tweaking a little? So let's try turning these 64, 64. And now let's see. All right, <laughs> the exact same value. Let's try tweaking uh, C. Give it a, a inverse regularization strength of 10 and nothing, what about 100. Interesting. All right, well, this is somewhat bizarre, <laughs> right? They're all exactly the same, which means that maybe we've hit the ceiling for how well this can do. Uh, let me just see something very interesting. When I was doing this before, I was able to get a um, accuracy of 93% for the SVM model. What happens if we split this again? Sometimes the order of this can actually have an effect on our model. We train, uh, we split it again, and train test split actually will shuffle our data. So it's creating a, a randomness. So we'll try redoing it. Now let's see. Wow. So what this is saying, because we only have 100 rows, and we chose a test set of 30%, that's only 30 examples that it, it, it's generating these results from. And if it's getting, by chance, 30 easy examples, this will be higher. If it's getting, by chance, 30 hard examples, this will be lower. But I think it's safe to say that even if we have hard examples, we're going to get something around 90%. So, you know, that's really good. Um, I mean, again, it's a very simple data set, so this isn't surprising, but it would be nicer if we had more data, right? This is a very small data set, so we can't really see how well our model is doing based on just 30 examples. But uh, I think that concludes today's episode. I know it's a short one, but thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, make sure to subscribe and hit that bell, and leave any comments below with any suggestions you might have for the channel. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a great day.